I wonder if he's second. Show me his. He'll drink all the buffer. Show me his puss. He'll drink all the buffer. <laughs> show me his puss. If he were on the bucket now, he'd be barred around the puss. I didn't get barred myself. I didn't hear you. Well, I got barred. What harm is that? Don't mind about that. Don't mind about our age now, but ask me right for the cab. Well, what you yes, sir, give him part of for him. He got this very easy to do it. I'm me off it is. Well, what are you what, asking for? You see what you're buying. What, what are you asking for? Forty-five pound. Forty-five pound. Give him forty. Give him forty. I give him thirty-five. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Give him forty pound. Do you see what you're buying? Give him forty pound. But you know how the times are. Didn't he have? I know what the times are. All right. The calf is good. God bless him. Yeah, and you're a, a you're a, a, a fine man selling them. God bless you. I know. I know. Good one. Hey. You're not too bad at that. I give him thirty-five pound for him. Oh, hey. Don't be cutting me. Give him forty pound. But look to you here, you are. And you wouldn't answer me? No. Joe Flanagan, farmer. He's lived here near Loch Coutre in South Galway for all of his 59 years. He says it's been a good life and he's a happy man. But now he and his brother are selling out because they're getting on in years. These are his last working days in the county Galway. I was born and reared here now in Hollywood. There was a big family. There was 11 of us, I think, entirely. There was five nuns in it. And five girls, the only five sisters I had became five nuns. Two of them are gone to heaven, Sister Joseph and Sister Philomena. And I regret them very much because this time of year they become on home. I think it was the 30th of June we started. What a bit nice. And they're there. Joe lives with his elder brother, Patrick, a bachelor. There's no one left to look after them since Joe's wife died 18 months ago. So they look after each other. It's difficult at times, and every day, as so you, you see that, that where there isn't a woman in a house, there is nothing. Ah, we cook all right, and we, we're managing so far so good. I make bread, and Patrick is satisfied eating loaf bread, you see? He wants a brown cake, so I also like a brown cake. And yeah, we were trained in this years and years ago before we had any woman, the last time I've seen her and so on. I was very young and tired when I married first. I was married about at the age of 23 years. She was older the last time I've seen her. Much older. She'd be over 40. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And 42 or 3 years that way. Mm. It was a business transaction. But nearly all matches are, are based on the same thing. Do you know, long ago, well, we were living for years and years ahead, do you see? Because when we married, we were secured in ourselves and making ourselves as sound as we could financially, physically, and otherwise. Joe was very happy, old character, and the woman the last missing was happy with me. Very, very happy. We used to have little quarrels around about boiling the kettle and, you know, that sort of way, all right. And that was natural. Eh? What way you stay rare, th these babies, that time when they had no, like, no... <clears throat> when they had no doctors or no any of these new stuff at all. Well, asses mist, they have to give the right kidney. And me what asses mist? Asses mist. Asses mist. Mm -hmm. Nearest to the human. Yeah, asses mist. He's fine when they had the boat, the water flight, and I didn't see him in them about. But these other fights are just as bad as the water. And worse. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, look at that. Yeah, she's out there. Oh, yeah. Sook, sook, sook. Jesus, hold old 
keep that old tail in the wheel. I will, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll get a hatchet and cut the whole thing. No, way. not. You would be better off. You'd shit have nothing than to hunt the flies. <laughs> have you got a hatchet and cut it off the tail of there, my nature? Hold on, when I start. Start the wheel. She's a real low to call Nicky in Aberdeen, and uh, what we do is we let the calves suck their mothers, and we'll be self stocking and uh, we let them rear them away, and they rear them good, and we times we put two calves in a cow, uh, and we say nothing to them, we'd we, we rather, we'd rather the, 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 the beef, uh, incentive scheme, we draw that uh, 16 pound a cow or so on, that's what we do. And uh, 16 pound and we rear the calves and she's getting her pinching every year. The poor old cow, she's getting 16 pound and she's rearing the calf, do you know? In a day of the crater. So, so you're making a sugar Making a sugar no, old cattle is right. Making a sugar. What, uh, what do you use it for, Joe? Oh, tying the trams before the storm had come. Or when we were, we were, if we were shot to bind and twine or spun yarn, mm. you make, or if we've got a sultry day like this now, you'd make 20 and 30 sogans, and there's more store in them than for hay in trams. What I mean by more store is to hold down a bigger area. It's a fair sized farm, 150 acres, no tillage. They've got five unbroken horses, 80 sheep and lambs, a herd of 80 cattle. They're snug enough in their old house without electricity, with no television, no running water, no telephone, no sewerage, no lavatory. As the same as we run on free wheel now compared with long ago. But what yeah. makes the difference now? Uh, what makes the difference is the time's got good. They got good ever since, since, since Hitler invaded Poland. Up to that, we had the years of the Depression, the economic war, and if we had all the land that was in the parish of Behe, you couldn't make a pound out in it. Mm. Tillage is a thing of the past in this part of Ireland, you know. Uh, there's too much labour with it, and the land is a bit in too heavy and rich and strong and subject to <coughs> weeds, you know. It is great for tillage, too good, in fact. You don't want land that heavy for tillage, but possessing more lime-like, and that it would be lighter, and it'd be better for the barley. This is bad land for barley here now, you know. But by, and, lime. Right. by and large, Joe, all you do is graze cattle and sheep. Graze cattle and sheep, and so as much potatoes as what will do yourself. Yeah. So, so it sounds, by and large, to somebody like me from a city, to be quite an easy sort of a life you have. It here. is easy. It is easy. Ah, it is. And what about, all the talk about of... the, what about all the talk about the poor farmer in the west of Ireland? I don't mind them. The farmers are the biggest humbuggers in the world. And you never could get nine farmers yet without some one of them fighting for it, either with the weather, the times, the crops, or with the shopkeepers, or with the merch, with something. Now, you can't get nine tailors without some one of them being lawyer. You often hear that. I did, of course. But you can't. What, what, about, what about the NFA and farmers' organisations generally? Do they interest you at all? Uh, not too much. If they spend more of their time in draining the, the land of Ireland, especially the West, and to be have the roads, as I might as well say, they're too good. Mm. Cutting turns and making cars go faster, and all to this. And there's a river flowing all through the place here, and it wasn't done since Lord Goff's time, and still we have to pay rates. You see, that's the hard thing about land, is your land, could we could be much better off if they'd done the necessary amount of draining. I drained it, but they don't do it. But why don't you do it yourselves? Well, I tell you, the people are doing it now themselves, because you can bring in your own, uh, get your own drainer. There's a... Uh, the equipment is there now, and you'll get a bit of a grant for doing it. But uh, the government should do the same as they're doing the roads. The roads. Why, why is it, Joe? Now, you've got 150 acres here. You say you make a reasonable living. Do you make a very good living? Ah, uh, we make a good living. Why, why don't you have electricity in your house, then? Well, I'll tell you the meaning of that. The, 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 the ESP, they won't pull it when there are more houses. Here about now, it is, uh, well, thinly populated as regards houses. And... I've had enough, Mick. And uh, they won't... Uh
like Germany. ESB boys, you're not like the Germans. The Germans wouldn't do that big or the, the, the Americans. And here we are, paying big rates and no ESB, Carl, no. Paul. Paul? That's not bad, that's not bad. You'll do yourself an injury. Take Paul, let's pull it again, easy, again. Thank God we can't. Do you keep books? Do you uh, do it scientific? Dick in the book. We want no book at all. Old head is old book, do you know? And you, we know the races and we know what we make it. We make a good old blush to money here. I like pigs, mm. and <laughs> I suppose the way they put it, I was used to pigs always, and a pig, a pig is a pig is the same, it's no matter what, what you do with them. Mm. And uh, he's, but uh, they're friendly, they're friendly creatures, I believe of all, I read at one time, a pig. The cat puts a notch in his back, Cahal. He puts a, a notch, he arches his back. Yeah. When he is caught in a food from you, and whereas the pig is the opposite. He is, oh, he can't bear it. He's asking it you and demanding it you everywhere with a nose and all. Mm. And when he has a debt, he comes back and thank you. Like this. <laughs> but the cat, when he has enough head, he'll turn his back in you. <laughs> so you like the pig? I like the pig. Cat is a great moor. He's the last of the moors now. I safely say, get three more moors now in Galway. In, in East Gal South Galway, as we call it. And I think he's ranking in for you know to be one of the legends. You lost fingers off both hands. In I an did. Accident. I did, man. I H did. Carl. How did that happen? It happened in 1940. 40, 1940 November. There was a a neighbour and myself. We were putting down a blast. I know. Well, yes, in the operation. I think this war float was called. It's a composition of chemicals put together. There's saltpeter in it and sulfur and some uh, uh, gunpowder and several other things with Paddy O'Brien over here and mix up the things and tamp it, you see. What were you doing? You were trying to shift the stump of a tree uh, or something? No, were you? no, it was a big stone Yeah. and tamping it and I suppose I was this way, you, you might say. Do you know? Yeah. And the tamping bar that when Paddy was hitting the, the, the bar and uh, the steel bar, and it was a flint stone. Now the steel bar ignited, it, it, it ignited the blast, and away we goes, up into the sky. Mm. And I can work away the same as ever, and I have no pains. Of course, in very cold weather, these fellas would get cold. Of course. Cold, and the same thing applies to all ex-soldiers, mm. and ex-servicemen, and... I count myself a next man to because I was wounded in 1940. <laughs> no, he's cutting it in. He's going be cutting cotton. And what do you do? You're cutting with the grain or you're cutting... Is there any particular with the grain. Yeah. He, he, he can't cut no, any more wouldn't be able to cut. Go more. ahead, Pat. I go more now. Off you go. More way. More way. More way. Go ahead, go ahead. Proceed, says Hitler. <laughs> I'm cutting it over near 40 years. I am. It is nice work. The whole secret of mourning with a side yes, is each. Oh, yes, 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 a very bad, yes, delicate man could cut any amount of hay if he had edge. But if he, the strongest man in the world to kill, to kill a bull, if you had bad edge, you wouldn't be able to cut it all. Hey, years, 20 years. Everybody in the land now is very well off. Mm. They're talking about that the farmers aren't well off. They are well off. But you'll want to have a certain amount of acres, you know. Mm. And that is that they'd want to keep uh, any farmer who want to have at least six or seven cows and send in the middle of the creamery. And I think the creamery is not much either. You know, the longer we stay here and rain here, 
the order will be coming. And we have the one amount of tramping and walking over to do, day in, day out. And we'll retire to a small, small little place to have a small little bit of land. We're sick of land. A pole is a big animal now for 30 pound and 25. And there's a chance in them that, well, if we didn't sell one way, you'd be selling another way. What I mean, one way, if he wasn't sold for agricultural purposes in a year's time, sad to say, he'd be sold to the factory for his flesh, for horse meat. But uh, is that worth, is it worth your while doing that? I it mean, is. Will you make any money on it? Oh, you would, and make a great bit of money in it because why we have some risky land, coarse grass, and in the winter time of the year, cattle, cows or sheep won't eat it, and they'll eat it, and they'll clean it, they'd make it like a tennis court for you. <laughs> It's not all work for Joe and Patrick Flanagan. This is a great part of the world for talk. And like most Galway men, they set aside one week a year for leisure and off with them to the Galway races. Number three, King Sprite. King Sprite. What are you going to have on it? Ten bob each way. Each way. It's such a little better than that. Do you wonder, will I give you a ticket or put it down to your name? Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, if I had a ticket, sure, to be. Whatever your step is. What's your show? That's the very way. Ten bob each way. And you wouldn't do that, would you? Hey, uh, but sure, that was no Smith making them. Rand they were, metal, 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 they were right. But though Joe Flanagan's farmhouse may be remote, maybe four fields back off the road, he's far from cut off. Because Joe is a folklorist, a collector of old stories from Sharachis in the Galway and Clare areas. And the old storytellers are dying out. Look them in the fire before you put the mark on. To soften them. Yes. God, there's no doubt about it. You're a, you're a terrible pair of talkers. You're Willie, aren't you? Willie Martin. That's yeah. Willie Martin. How are you? Yeah. How are you? Yeah. And this is the man that has some stories for you. That's so. the man, no. <laughs> yeah. The greatest worker in, 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 in Clarenbridge, in Rovere. This is also a parish. This is the parish, isn't it? 
Just was the old parish with that change it over to Clarendon Bridge. Oh, I see. Put the priest the way to be handy for them. Oh, the way to be handy. And another them. thing, the way to be handy for thou let them go for a mugging. <laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> so you, you've gathered a lot of stories from people around here. How did you get into this business of biddy alien folklore and all Ah, uh, well, <clears throat> naturally, <clears throat> I was interested in it. And my brother, Sean Dean, uh, the, uh, he was teaching and uh, there was some years there that he didn't teach and he uh, changed over to the Folklore Commission. Gathering stories. Gathering stories, Cahill. Collecting folk tales and it's very hard now to meet a Shanaki like Willie, Willie Mock we call him. Yeah. You have no objection to say that? No, 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 no. no, no. Willie Mock Merton. Mm. And he was collecting all these and he was writing them out for Professor Delargy and Sean O'Sullivan. It was so interesting that he was appointed permanently with the Folklore Commission. And he was there in the uh, years, we'll say 1938, 39 and 1940. During that time he made a big compilation of work for the Folklore and Commission. And were you, were you I doing... was with him. You were with him. Mm. He was doing the Irish. Mm. Sean is very good at the Irish. And I was doing the English. Mm. And he was capable of changing the stories I used, getting the day from English. He was able to put them into Irish for the folklore mm. mission. But you must have gathered quite a lot of them, did you? And oh, we, a lot can, of these we, we forget a show. lot of them now, but we collected a yeah. lot of tales from every sort, yeah. and particularly about this area and from here to Crockwell, mm. and from that to Derry Bryan and Woodford. They have not got that there. I like everybody, but yes. you couldn't love everybody, Joe Holly. Then that there's no loving, do you see, to marry you? There's no what? <laughs> no loving, you know. <laughs> no love? Yes. Uh, love is a... Uh, love is a... Is it there at all, Joe? Or is there such a I thing as... I suppose it is. When the dancers no, in the country uh, house, Joe, will get the two. Well, it is... Do you know what it is, uh, Welch? Right. Tis a luxury, the poor love. And no one can okay, afford it. There. Can't afford it now. That's my it's costly now. diagnosis. Well, 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 Something they call it. It's a luxury of the poor, I call yeah. it, and we can't afford it. No other no, entertainment. It's, it's entertainment. I mean, well, dancing. call it what you like. But apart from that, there was no love 50 years ago when there was matchmaking. Well, there was some love before you married, was there not? Oh, definitely. Definitely there was. There's a love between and, and, and it's still, oh, it's it's still it's there. Well, yeah, I didn't see Mickey tell it. Well, 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 I won't discuss it. I, I'm very, I bet. My tongue of giant roses is very, very nimble. It is very subtle. And when I say things, I say maybe a yeah. lot of hair things. What I say, there's no such thing as love at all. Well, well there was no love. No one will there was no love, love in you then. Huh? No love. No love, no, no. Not to give away. Not to give away. yourself. What do you call love yourself, for darling? Yourself. Only for yourself. Only for myself. Yeah. I'm self yeah. that sort of a type. <laughs> but of course, you know, you'd never know. I like, I love everyone. When it comes to the moment that you've got to go around here and say goodbye to whatever is left of your neighbours, yes, and move off into the county Tipperary, yes, how are you going to feel then? I feel very lonely after the crater. But all the same, as you know, I'll have a car and I'll be driving again, please God, and driving away. And you know what? Uh, I'll be coming around all the time to see them. You know, after all, you get the nicest people in the world around here. Yeah. South Galway, he, yes, or is it South? Yes, South Galway here and, and North Clare and East Clare. And nicest people in the whole world, isn't it? But after all, is it time to retire? Farmers don't ever retire. I, I think I'm the first one that's going to hand in the goods. We head to the banks of the Boyne tomorrow to meet factory worker and water diviner Tony Coyle in the 1968 documentary A Quiet Way of Life at Half Eight. That's also part of the RTE TV 50 celebrations. For more, head to rte.ie forward slash TV 50.